Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to 10 Days of Power BI once again. My name is Chinon Sokunko. You're yeah, welcome once again to 10 Days of Power BI. So we took a little break yesterday to yesterday was the 10 of 10 day 9 rather of 10 days of power bi so we took a break yesterday to work on all we've been learning we took a break to practice recreating the dashboard for maven toys expansion plan and we're back today with another lesson so welcome back to 10 days of power bi And as usual, we're going to just wait a few minutes for others to join in. And by exactly 6, 10 p.m., we are going to start today's session. So we're just going to wait for five more minutes for us to join in and without further ado, we'll begin today's class. So you can hear me, you can do as usual, you can just drop your location, just tell us where you're joining us from today. Just drop that in the chat box. Thank you for tuning in today.
Okay, while we're waiting for others to join in, I'm just going to take this question from Michael. Michael is asking in the chat box, would you post a summary of all the links to resources you shared to use in the class and for additional learning? So I'm going to upload all the all my slides and all the files, all the all the data sets that we use to practice. I'm going to upload it to a drive and I'm going to organize everything and then I'm going to share that in the Telegram group. So that should come in tomorrow. That should probably come in tomorrow. So just check, check the Telegram group by tomorrow. You should see a link to a Google Drive where you find everything and any other additional resources that will aid your learning. I'm going to add it as well. So just check tomorrow. So the time is 6 10 p.m. and we are just going to start now. I think we're giving room for others to join in so it's about time we get into today's work. So today is the 10 of 10 days of Power BI and I commend you guys we've made it here from day one and now we are officially in day 10 of 10 days of Power BI. All right. So I posted in the Telegram group, today's session is a walkthrough through your case study to kind of like help you and set you on the right path and a Q&A session based on everything you've learned in this program. So I made a slight adjustment to that which I sent to you. So today I'm going to be adding something else. So Based on the previous the previous class, I talked about colors a bit, and then I went on Twitter, and then I saw a few dashboards that didn't exactly take my corrections. I felt like they still needed work on their choice of colors. So I decided to add colors into today's class as well. So I'm going to explain a bit more about why colors is a very vital thing and why I think people are getting it wrong and they need direction in. So today we're going to use the first 50 minutes to talk about the colors and to walk you through your case study. And then the last one hour, we're just going to use it to take questions. If there are any questions on anything and that's all it will be for today. So we're going to start off with discussing colors and a walkthrough of your case study. Then we we'll move on to Q and A session. I think that's clear enough. So why exactly do I keep like bringing up this whole colors, this visualization thing, this whole color thing, this whole color thing? Basically, you can put in a lot of work. Now, I know the hours some people might have spent in already trying to replicate the dashboard I created yesterday, right? Or day before that, rather, day before yesterday. So people are spending a lot of time, a lot of hours put into replicating that. And then they go ahead and make the wrong use of color. And once you make the wrong use of color, all your hard work is like kind of goes to waste. Someone is going through like going through their page or going through a thread and they come across your dashboard. It won't take them long. It won't probably take them more than five seconds. Once they see it, they will just scroll through it. So this is why I feel like colors, you don't want to put, you don't want to use the color that is going to set your, your audience or your viewers in the, in the mood that they are not even accepting of the color. I don't know how to, I don't know how to put this, but starting out, you need to get inspirations from other people. Starting out, you can start out with just replicating a dashboard. There's nothing wrong with you just replicating a dashboard, like complete from start to finish. To be able to even replicate a dashboard, that is like, that is work. That is something that is commendable. 
So once you start off first, start off with replicating the dashboard. See exactly how you can go. Replicate dashboards. Give credit to people. You can go online, see other dashboards, replicate it and credit the owners. Okay, so to test out my data analysis skills, I decided to work on this data set and to try to replicate this report created by, say, Stephanie French, which is, she's a very good data analyst on LinkedIn as well. Say, by somebody else, you see, you come across their dashboards. There are lots of people that are good at this dashboard thing. Then how do you know people that are good? You go across LinkedIn and you see people's dashboards that they have created and you see other top recognized professionals in this industry commending them for their work. So this is how you know a dashboard is good. When you see top professionals commending them, oh, nice, and you look at their detailed feedback that they're giving them. So you, you can tell that this visual, and even you yourself, looking at the visual, is going to give you a nice look. It's going to be able to pass across information to you. So you can tell that this is a very good dashboard to basically replicate. So that's why I would say starting out, you see there are lots of dashboards online that you can go ahead and get inspiration from. You can go ahead and see a very dashboard, a very fine dashboard that you like or a report, and be able to look at the colors and see, oh, the colors is what is making this dashboard pop, apart from just the analysis. You can go ahead and impute that color into your own dashboard. So it's basically, it's basically like, instead for you to go ahead and think of the right color to use, you get inspiration from someone else's dashboard. So I'm not saying you should go ahead and copy people's work without giving credit, but you can get inspiration, you can have things. There's always going to be your own touch in anything you do. So starting off first, you can start off with replicating people's dashboard from start to finish and give credit. And once you feel you've once you feel you've been got you get you've gotten the hang of it, you can move on to creating your own dashboard as well. So I'm going to go into I'm going to go into the colors for today. So we're going to try to see if this can help set us on the right path. So let's move on first. So there are very there are four basic color palette structures you can use. There's the sequential, the divergent, the categorical, and highlighted. So we're going to get into this. What exactly is a sequential color palette, a divergent color palette, categorical, or even highlighted? Let's talk about this. So this, see, looking at your screen, you can see a sequential palette placed here now. Sequential color palettes consist of shades of a single color, just a single color. The light shade must represent small numbers and the darkest shade, large numbers. So a sequential palette is, ba is basically you just picking one color, say blue, say purple, say black, and representing like a shade of the color. Now, where exactly does sequential color palette comes into play. You have just one, say you have just positives in your data and you just want to show, let's put it like this. Let's say you have like a data set of positives ranging from like good to very good. There is no poor here. There's no, there's no poor ratings or anything. Just from good to very good. This is where a sequential palette can come into place. Or let's say you have um, you have a time series data. You created, you exported the WhatsApp chat, and you want to see which time were people chatting the most. You can use a you can use a sequential palette. This is going to tell you that the 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 light area, the areas with the light shade is showing these are the times that people chatted few, while the areas with the darkest shade is going to tell you oh these are the areas that people were chatting the most. So, looking at the palette, if it's created, the first thing people are going to be able to see, they will see that deepest shade, which is where you want to point their attention to, okay, this is where people, this is the time that people were quite active in this chat, chat group. So, I think that kind of gives you a feel of what the sequential palette is. So, it's just one color and like a shade of the color, as you can see. So, let me move on to the next. Diverging palettes. Now, diverging palette is used when data separates into different sets with a neutral midpoint. It is useful for showing the positives, neutral, and negatives. So you can use it for showing positive, neutral, and negative ratings. Let's, let's break it down a bit. So you have two colors here, and then you have a neutral color. 
your neutral color you can use white or you can use like you can see a pale yellow color used here but basically i would say just go for a white or go for like a a, a dark gray color based a, a light gray color rather based on your background so if you have a white background you're placing that chart on you don't want to go with a light a, a white a white neutral point uh, as well because it's just going to blend into the background so you can go with like a light gray that's still similar to a white color so now this is where i want to talk about this is where i want to focus on the most This color palette, diverging color palette, you can use it to show positive, neutral, and negative, right? You can also use it to show how things progress from like hot to freezing or freezing to hot. So based off on these ratings, let's say you, were, you gave out a customer survey form and you told your customers to rate your service positively, negatively, like very good, good, neutral, poor, and very poor ratings now. And you're creating a dashboard for this. How exactly do you select the color you want to use for this? So say you decide to go ahead with this red-blue color palette that you can see here. What color signifies your positives and what color signifies your neutral and negative? Start with neutral first. Your neutral will be something that looks neutral, which is just a white color, a light gray color. Then let's go with our negatives now. What is that one color that we see that we are that we automatically ascribe to like a negative or like meaning oh something is going wrong here or something is going bad? That is red. So your negative, you're definitely going to be using red. Now where people miss this contest is sometimes I see negative and someone decides to use like let's say a blue color. This is wrong because you're, you're sending off a wrong information and then you use red for your positive. When you use red for your positive, people are like, it's like you're telling them to change the way they've been conditioned to think already. You're giving them more, I don't know how to call it, more um, information overload. You're telling them, okay, now you're facing my reports, you're facing my dashboard, whatever you know before, change it. Instead of taking red to mean something bad, now change it and take red to mean something good. You don't want to confuse people too much. Just stick with what people already know, which is they assign red to mean something bad or something that you need to pay attention to. There's, there's something going on here. There's like a danger or something. So once you are picking your diverging palette to show your ratings, if you're making use of colors, like let's say you can use blue, you can use a purple, but make sure that you can clearly tell that these colors clearly convey meanings. Spend time, spend some time thinking about which color makes the most meaning for every visualization. Don't just select a color, think about it. Which color makes the most meaning for like a very poor category? You do not want to give a green color for something that is signifying that ratings are very low. You don't want to give a green color to that. Okay, I think I think diverging color palette has been explained well enough. Let's move on to the next categorical palettes. Now, this is one thing even I am not comfortable working with, and I'll tell you why. Let's go into categorical palettes. Categorical palettes is used for visualizing different categories. It's typically used when you want to show that the categories are two different things. So you have a categories of like, let's say locations, let's say um, like the dashboard we worked on the day before yesterday. Let's say we have like a commercial, downtown, airport location. So you want to show that these two categories mean different things. You can make use of colors that will complement each other at the same time, will not be too much on the high. So looking at this, you can see this color palette just to represent that each category means a different thing. Now, where this categorical palette has a limitation is, it just only works well when you have at most four categories of data. So if you're having a lot of categories of data, you're going to be using different colors and your dashboard is going to end up looking like what we call a, a rainbow dashboard. It's just going to be full of so many colors and your, your audience is not going to be able to interpret anything. It's just going to be a lot. 
like an information overload, too many colors. So this is where I think the next palette comes into place to try to save this color palette, which I call the highlighted. So highlighted also works for categorical data. As you can see, this was one of the dashboards we created yesterday. I just brought it over here. So highlighted, this is used to highlight a single category or more by pushing the other categories to the background using a light gray color. It helps to guide your viewer's eye to where you want them to focus. So if I was going to ask you that, immediately I switch to this slide, what was the very first thing your eye was drawn to? It would be this airport because of this color, this purple color. That would have been the first thing your eyes was drawn to. So this highlighted category still does the same thing, still represents that these are all different categories, but it helps you or viewers focus on where you want them to. Using just this color is going to make them look at this airport. Okay, this is where I want you to see, but this are still important in my storytelling. I'm just pushing them to the background so you can focus. You can also highlight more than one category, depending on what you want to tell. So if you're talking about two categories, you can also highlight another category as well. Now that we've been talking about colors as well, and we all know it's, um, some of us are not very good with colors, like me, myself, I'm not very good with colors. So I tend to play it safe, like I always say. The first thing you can do is so you can go online and look for dashboards and look at dashboards that the colors were used well, or look at dashboards that people are experienced professionals in the industry are, commend, uh, are commending. You can try to get an inspiration from the colors there and use it as well. Also, you can go to this website here, colors.co. Once I send you the slide, you can get the link or you can just copy this in your, you can just search for this and you get to the website. So you can go to this website to get colors or to generate a color combination. So they have a tool that generates like a palette for you so they can generate like a sequential palette for you and a diverging palette as well. So once you go there, they generate like a palette for you and all you just need to do is you just need to copy the color code. So once you copy the color code or the X codes, you just go to your Power BI and in your colors, your more colors, you're just going to paste it in there. The last thing you see here uh, that I wrote is proofread your work. So this is something that even I, I fall for to like I end up falling victim to sometimes. Once we start working on a data project, the enthusiasm is there. We want to work on a data project. We want to show people that, yes, I've been taking courses online, but yes, I can do something. I can analyze this data set. I am good at this. So we get a work and we start working on it. But then as we keep going, Little by little, our passion sometimes reduces. We get, we get a little bit frustrated sometimes. It gets tiring sometimes. And then once you're done with it, you don't want to even go through it. You're just like, oh, I'm done with this dashboard. I created a dashboard that solves the problem. I'm just going to go ahead and post it. Now, this is where you need to take a pause and actually go through your dashboards yourself. You need to proofread your work. This is just like you creating an essay, writing an essay. You want to proofread it to check if there's any grammatical errors before you go on online and share it. Instead of you sharing it and getting re uh, remarks from people that, oh, there is something here, you're, you're, you didn't spell this right, or there's a problem with your alignment here. You want to be like your own critic. Though you're not going to be perfect, even if, I'm not saying you should not, um, I'm not saying when you, once you post your dashboard online, you should post a very perfect one that people can correct or something. But I'm saying you should make sure you go through the process of proofreading your work, proofreading your reports as well. So you've put in the hard work already, analyzing your data and creating the visuals and insights. Why not just go the extra mile and decide to proofread your work? You need to check while you're proofreading your work, check that the full test is showing. Check that your month is showing, that everything in January, everything is showing in full. February, everything is showing in full. If it's not showing in full, you can go to your Power Query and say, okay, find and replace January. Replace January with just J-A-N if you just want to use an abbreviation that would work well. So just make sure that everything is showing. Not, not your category labels are hard to like read. 
but sometimes you get some categorical labels that I know that are definitely hard. Like I worked on one data set where the product name was quite large. So I think room can be made for those kind of this kind of product, those kind of categories. I think room can be made for that. But then there are some things like your months that are not large that should be showing clearly on your dashboard that should be able to see January in full, February in full. Or at least see a J N like Jen in full. Like let everything be of the same. So if I'm seeing January in full and I come over here to February and I'm just seeing F E B R U, it's kind of like gives up. Okay, dot dot dot. Okay, why is that not showing fully? That's what I'm just fixated on. So you need to proofread your work to check that okay, my alignments are aligned properly. My colors. Okay, if I'm using these numbers, if I'm placing these numbers, because I. If, I, if I'm placing these numbers on this, um, let's say I pick a dark background of like, let's say a dark brown, and then I decide to place like a white test color on it. A, sorry, I pick a dark brown shape, dark brown shape, and then I select a test that is also a black color and I place it on the brown. And then I look at it and I'm like, can someone easily see this? Can someone easily see this? So if you think it's going to be really hard to distinguish that, okay, this text that I'm putting in this shape, it's hard to see it. You might want to change it from that black color to a white color. So once you have a dark color, you want to be placing a light color on it so people can see it. Easily. I think one thing you should also try to do as data analysis, you should also try to do research. You want to be a good data analyst. Everybody wants to make it in this data analyst industry. Everybody wants to be successful. So if you want to be successful, you have to put in the work. Not everything is going to be handed out to you. Not every course you take online is going to teach you everything. You need to go online and search, okay, what are colors, what are the type of data visualization mistakes I shouldn't make? Or this, or you, you just need to search some things. Data analysts should have a very good problem solving skills. You should be able to figure out, okay, I have a problem. Let me go online and Google how to solve this problem. So a lot of people that have jobs or get jobs, they don't know everything yet, but they at least know how to get help. They know how to get the information they need to solve a problem. So let's let's move on now. Now that we've talked about colors and I've seen a lot of I want to commend people that have been creating the dashboard. I saw um I, I've been seeing some works online. Well done. Um, your alignment is good. I commend your alignment and all. Choice of colors might be a little thing, uh, might be a little something you need to work on. So we've gotten to a stage where we work on a case study. So you get to work on your case study. And as a beginner, I've selected a case study that would be able to show your data analysis skills, but as well would be able, but would not overwhelm you as well. So this is a typical case study that you work on as a beginner and to, to, to test your data analysis skills and your data visualization skills as well. So let's go through the case study details together. Want to be clear enough. So let's start with this. Case study is a by sales analysis. 
They were giving a sales data for a company in Europe, including information about the daily sales transactions and customers. The bike sales data set can be gotten here. So you can just come on here and it will take you to the Google Drive where you can download the data set. So I provided a little uh, metadata about the data set. Data set contains 18 columns in a, in a CSV file. The date column contains the date the sales was made in and the month, date, year format. So the typical Nigerian date format is your date, your month, and your year format. But this date format is the month, date, and year format. I think it's a US time format. Now for the next one, the day, month, and year column contains the day, the month, and the year the sales were made respectively. The customer age column contains the age of the customer, how old the customer is at the time the sales was made. The age group column contains the age of customers grouped in different ranges. So the age of the customers were grouped in ranges. We're going to check that out in the data set as well. The customer gender column contains the gender of the customers, F for female, M for male, so just F representing female, M representing male. So this is one thing that com can come up in your analysis. Once you see F, you see an M, you want to replace it with something better descriptive. So this is, a, an, this is I'm already giving you an hint to this project. So once you're seeing F, you have to replace with female. Once you're seeing M, you have to replace it with male. So once you come in your data, anything that is not descriptive enough, replace it with something that is descriptive enough for your audience. Don't let them do too much thinking to try to understand that F means female and M means male. Let's go to the next. The country and state column contains the country and the states the sales were made in. Okay. The product category, subcategory, and product name of the products are contained in the data set as well. The other quantity contains the unit of each product sold. So if you, if you sold one product, two, three, four. The unit cost contains the cost price of a unit product. How much that product was bought for? The unit, the unit cost, rather. The unit price contains the selling price of a unit product, how much the product was sold for. Now, the profit contains the profit generated from the sale of the product, from that sales, which is the revenue, which is the difference between the revenue and the cost of the product. So the revenue also means sales. So different between the sales and the cost, different between the revenue and the cost, same thing. Then the next. The cost contains the cost of the sales in dollars and the revenue column contains the amount generated from the sales in dollars. So this is just to help you with your with understanding your data better. So let's move on to our scenario. Scenario. You've just been hired by a bike sales company in Europe. You've been brought in to analyze the sales data from 2011 to 2016. Your job is to design a sales dashboard or report for the executives to help them track revenue and profit generated. Let's take a step back now here. So who are we working for? Where, what is the scenario? We're working for a, bio, a bike rather, a bike sales company. What is the time frame of the data set we're analyzing from 2011 to 2016? What is the business problem we are trying to solve? We're trying to help them track revenue and profit. So we want to be creating a sales dashboard to help them know how much sales have been made, which product generated the most sales or the most revenue. Still same thing. Who is our audience? Who is the stakeholder in this case, the executives? These are some of the contests to this case study. So I made it, I made it a little easy, but it's still not easy, but it's still a little easy. So I, I broke it down to some questions you need to answer in your analysis. You need to answer the total revenue. What is the total revenue gotten within this time period, 2011 to 2016? These are some of the things I will expect to see in your report. 
what is what are the total sales made within that time period? What is the total unit of goods sold? What is the gross profit margin and the total number of customers? So based on what we did on our moving toys data set, you should be able to work with that and answer this question. So for the second question, the top five countries with the highest revenue and profit generated. So basically, the business will want to see which country do they need to focus more on like advertisements or marketing. So they want to know which country is bringing them more revenue and more profit as well. So for the first question, you might want to go with your know, card visuals to highlight these metrics. For the first question, you might want to go with card visuals to highlight these metrics. And for the second, you would have to select a select a proper chart by yourself. You have to think of the right chart that can represent this. I'm not going to tell you that. Then for the third, the age group distribution of gender by revenue. Age group distribution of gender by revenue. So when it comes to distribution of data set, this is where your histogram comes into play. And now I'm talking about this because we didn't even discuss this. Some data sets will provide you with customer or like what is like it's like a customer demographic or what or probably to provide you with some customers information such as the age group so companies like to use this to know who are their customers are their customers teenagers or youths or what's the majority of their customers so this is going to help the age group distribution of gender by revenue is going to sorry There's a mistake here with this. I'm going to um, edit that and probably send you a copy. So this is just supposed to be the age group distribution by revenue. So a slight correction here. This is just supposed to be the age group distribution. I'm going to remove this by revenue. So I'm going to make an edit to that. I apologize. So this is one thing I say about proofreading your work. I was just in a hurry and I didn't proofread. So the age group distribution by revenue. So this is just going to be showing you the age group distribution, which age group provided the most revenue. You'll be able to tell this. You can even be able to highlight that region that had the most revenue, that age group that had the most revenue, just like our previous moving toys data set. I highlighted that airport that had just the least number of stores because I wanted to say, okay, this is number of stores. Even with this, it had a large revenue. So I might, you might want to show this age group is the age group that is providing the most revenue. I want to like that. Then the next. Okay, so I think I might need to, okay, okay, let's just go to the next. A sales trend showing the revenue generated each month. And now you know the chart, what's your go-to chart for showing sales trend? What's your go-to chart for showing trends across a time period? Then next question, the top five products and subcategories by profit. And the bottom five products and subcategories by profit. So you might just need to focus on just focus on the five. You can focus on just your top five products and subcategories by profit, showing them the top five. Which of our products are bringing in the most profit? You can also include which products are not performing the best. So as a data analyst. You're required to carry out. So the first thing you have to do is understand your business problem, which I try to help you out with by telling you, okay, the business case is you're analyzing a bike sales company. The year of your analysis, 2011 to 2016, who is your audience? Is an executive? And what is the business goal overall? Is to create a sales report um, to help them track revenue, to tell them which regions are performing the most and which products are generating the most revenue. So you start off with that business problem and the next thing you're required to do is to carry out your basic data cleaning. So you're going to go to where? You're going to go to your Power Query Editor and you're going to make sure you clean this data step by step, each column by column. You're going to check, you're going to remove duplicates. You hit Control A and select the Remove Rules, Remove Duplicates. Also, Okay, as a data analyst, you're required to carry out basic data cleaning and transformation first before analyzing the data using appropriate charts. So 
data cleaning is a very vital part so it's like garbage in garbage out if you bring in dirty data in you're going to bring in a, like a wrong or dirty analysis after creating your dashboard you want to provide recommendations and insights based on this also i decided to add a little int here yeah. Based on what I saw online, I saw someone analyze this dashboard and the person followed, like the person made a mistake with using the wrong data and with not eliminating duplicates. So these are some things that people might fall prey to and rush ahead and create a visualization without checking for these things, without pro properly cleaning your data. This is why sometimes people say, take your time while cleaning your data so while carrying out the data cleaning so this is the inter provided ensure calculations including your data were performed correctly so you could get your data set and some calculations could have already been made for you by someone but you're the one that's still going to complete this whole process and provide recommendations so if you provide wrong recommendations based on this set of data who's going to be a the consequences is going to be you. So while carrying out your data cleaning, you need to ensure that the calculations that are included in your data were performed correctly. So once you get this data set, and I hope you guys have gone to just check out the data set to just preview it, you're going to see columns such as revenue and sales, which were already calculated. So you're going to check if these calculations were performed correctly. If they are performed correctly, you can decide to leave them. Or in some cases, the wise thing to do would be to delete these columns and go ahead to perform your own calculations, just to be very sure. So that's why I provided you. You can go ahead to delete these columns and provide your own calculation using calculators, columns, and measures in Power BI. So if this is something you work on this project and you want to write an article about what you did, this is something you would want to talk about that, oh, Based on your analysis, you notice that this happened here. Was the data, was the, was the calculations correct or the calculations were not correct? You talk about this. What did you do if it wasn't? If it was, how did you just move forward? This is something you might want to write about in your article. If you're writing a medium article about this. So I just included where this data was sourced from, which is I got the data set from Kaggle. So there are sites you can get data set from. You can get data set from Kaggle, from Maven Analytics. And basically, you can also just go to Google and search as a data analyst, where can I get data sets from? That can help you too. And uh, okay. So let's just go on to, we still have a little time. So let me just, Go to Power BI and just show you how your data set is looking like first. So I'm not going to show you that real quick. So I'm in my Power BI interface. I just want to get the data first. So I'm getting my CSV file in. Of course, the navigator window should open. It is just this. So you can see a preview of my data already. This is the date column I set in the format of months slash, what am I saying? Date, this is actually date slash month. Yeah, date slash month slash year. So this is the day, 26, 26. This is the month, November. This is the year. This is the customer age. 
this is the group, the age group, the gender, the country, the sales we're meeting. This is just it. And this is the unit cost, the other quantity, the amount of quantity that we ordered in. This is just if your data. So you, you, you start off with transforming your data. So there's just something I want to show you now. For this data set, it was provided, should I call it a bit easy? I think so. I think so. So let's, let me just try something out for you. So the first thing you want to do is actually see your data set, you know, and I'm not going to be doing that. I'm not going to be doing that today. I'm not here to show you how to do that. I think we've gone through that already. So you know what to do. I just want to show you how sometimes your data set is, prevent, is presented in just your date. And you might want to extract something like this was extracted already in November month. So this came with the data set. So imagine you're just presented with this and you want to actually see your month in it. So you're just going to select this date column. And then your add column. So I went to my add column. So let's go back. So this was the interface I was in. First thing I did was to select this date column. Then I went to add column because I want to add a new column containing month. Then I come over to this date. I select the drop down. Then I see, okay, month. This is what I want. So I'm going to select month. So this will create a new column containing the month. So I'm just going to pick the name of month. This is going to give me the month in like a numeric format. So I'm going to pick the name of month because I want to see the January, February, or March. So once I select the name of month, inserted month name. So I'm going to scroll down. You see that at the very end here. So I see this month name. So this is just this was provided for you, but you can go ahead to you can see how you can create that if that wasn't provided. You can do the same for year, select under your add column because you want to add a new column, your date, you can select the year you want. So that's just to show you that. So I talked about, so I'm just going to delete this first. So I talked about some calculations in your data set and you going through them. So you can see your unit price. Um, so what are the things that were not calculated for you and what were calculated for you? I think you should be able to descend this, but I'm just going to say also. So your other quantity is something that was not calculated for you. It was something that happened was just given to you. So the other quantity was not calculated. The other quantity wasn't calculated for you. The unit cost of the item also wasn't calculated for you. Unit price also wasn't calculated for you, it just came in. So now these three, your profit, your cost, and your revenue, these are the three things that were calculated for you. So you'd want to check this and check if they were calculated correctly for your data analysis. And if they weren't, you want to collect, you want to correct them yourself. How do you correct them yourself? Let's say if they weren't calculated correctly, you just select this column and say, oh, let's say it isn't calculated correctly. What should I do? I want to remove this column. You select it, you go to your home tab, remove columns, remove this column, you remove it. Then once you load your data in Power BI, you can create your DAX, your DAX measure or calculator column to calculate all of these things which you will need, like your revenue, your cost. So that's just saying if it wasn't calculated correctly. So you need to figure it out by yourself first. So I want you to go to this data set and first thing tomorrow morning, I'm going to ask on the group chat like, was it calculated correctly? I want to see the answers. I want to see what people think. If the revenue, cost, and profit were calculated correctly. I want to know what people think. So I'm going to ask that question in the group chat tomorrow morning just to see. So now I think we've gotten a view of the data set. You're going to clean it yourself. You're going to change the data types and apply any data cleaning yourself based on why I explain data cleaning. You should be able to do this. And then once you're done, you're going to close and apply. So this is just like previewing the data set. So now I'm just going to 
go ahead and check the group for check the chat post for any questions. I think we've covered it. So let's just go to my slide there. So it's time for the Q and A. It's time for your questions. So I have one question here from Solomon. Is it a must that we use slicers in our analysis? What if we need to share our results to PDF file where different slices cannot be used? This is why they discussed that Power BI is an interactive, like creates interactive reports. So once you create slicers, you decide if you want to share your report as interactive. So if you're sharing your report, you are going to be publishing to probably based on when I get a laptop, based on when I get a laptop, I'm going to probably consider doing a session where I show you how to publish to Power BI service and be able to share your report. So you can share your report and people can interact with it interactively. So if you are creating a slicer, people can be able to use the slicer to filter your data set. So it is not a must to use slivers in your analysis. It just depends on what you want to provide to your audience. So if you see, um, if you've been on LinkedIn and you see Maven Analytics, you see people, um, you see people making dashboards, and Maven Analytics is basically asking you to make like a one-page dashboard or report. So you majorly see that people do not make, do not include slivers for most of the time. So it's definitely not a must to include like that. So now I have another question here from Obiano Joe. Looking at the data set, how would we know if the calculated column is calculated correctly? You go ahead and you create another, okay, let's say close and load your data. Once you've cleaned your data, don't remove the columns. Just go ahead with that data set and close and load to your Power BI. So once you close and, close and load to your Power BI, create a measure, a calculated column, another new calculated column or a measure for your revenue. Just call it like revenue created like or revenue new. Just rename it because you already have a revenue column. Then you can bring out two card visuals, calculate the total revenue that was given based on your data set and calculate the total revenue that you have based on your own calculated revenue. Check the two values. If the two values are the same, then you're going to know if... Okay, I think this question is a bit different. I think I'm getting it different. How would we know if the calculated column is calculated correctly? You're going to know if your calculated column is calculated correctly because you're obviously the one putting in the formulas. It's just like you're saying, once you put in the formulas, it's going to give you the writing. It's like it, it's just like a calculator. Once you say um, three times three is going to give you nine, as long as you're doing three times three. So if you're calculating your revenue, once you're doing your selling price multiplied by your unit, it's going to give you the right amount. After Olada is asking, is there a way we can see duplicates the same way we can in Excel? 
I think this is one of the things that I've not been able to figure out in Power BI. I don't think Power BI offers you a way to see duplicates like the way you can in Excel. I think this is why Excel is still like the first two people recommend. There's also a question from Kairat. Is there a site we can get icons and images from and how can we import them into our report? Also, please, the link for the DAX functions you mentioned. Okay, Kairat, the site you can get icons from, I'm going to show you that after we deal with the Q&A session. So I'm just going to show you how to get icons and import them. I'm just going to show you that real quick. But that will be a little bit... So I'm just going to take questions first, and then I'll show you that. I get another question here. How to import new type of charts, like what cloud ETC? So I think that is also something I would need to show you in Power BI as well, depending on our time. So I'm going to show you how to import icons and how to import new type of charts also. Then, what is the difference between load and transform data on Power Query? Now, load your data means loading in your data directly. Like, immediately you get your data source, you just load it in without performing any data transformation or cleaning. Transform your data, like the name means, basically telling you, take it to where you transform it, which is cleaning it. So, you're going to transform your data, and then you can now decide to load it in to your Power BI for creating reports. So I see a question from Michael saying, I understand I can evaluate the values in a few rows to see if the calculations are correct in those rows. So I think, but how can I compare the entire column to my entire calculated column. So I think, Michael, I think what I understand from your question is you're saying you can basically like evaluate the values in a few rows, like maybe just looking at it, which I think we can do. But you want to know how you can compare the entire column to the entire calculated column. So that's what I was explaining earlier. So I said once you close and load your data with the, with the revenue column still being present, you create a new calculated column in your Power BI. So you call the column probably revenue, like a new new revenue or revenue like number two or something, just rename it. So once you create that, you've created two columns now. So you have what? You have your revenue column and you have your new calculated column too. So how do you know compare the two columns now? You can compare these two columns with charts. You want to get the sum of the values in these two columns. So this is when you go ahead and create, like, let's say, a card visual, or you can even create a table just to show you, okay, what's the sum of the values in this column, and what is the sum of the values in this column, and you compare. So I think that answers the question. Okay, I see another question from Olu Sonia. I've been trying to export my Mavens data analysis to PDF, but it's not going through. What might be wrong, please? So um, I think this is, you just need to go to the session where they say export and you export to PDF. I think, I don't really understand why it's not going through. Maybe you can share like a screenshot in the Telegram group to a better help, so I can better understand and help you. Okay, I see a question from Marian. Please, how do we create a portfolio? Creating a portfolio is not part of this standard of Power BI, but what is a portfolio? A portfolio is basically just, you just have a site where you store all of your, like your data projects. You create dashboards, you create like, you keep your data projects there and you detail, you write a detailed report on it. Like what you went through creating this report, your, data analysis thought process. 
So you can get a website, you can create a website from one of these sites like Wix and GitHub, but I'm not going to explain this. Probably I'm going to create a program for that, so how to create a portfolio, but prior to that, you can Google, you can check on YouTube how to create a data analytics portfolio, and I think something which should come up. So um, I see another question from um, I am Peter. If I remove a calculated column from a table, is new measure calculation the only way to replace it? Um, Peter, I'm not sure you, I'm not sure I really understand your question. Like, I'm not sure I really understand your question, but basically I said you can, you can create a measure and a calculated column. So maybe you can try phrasing your question again so I can see if I understand. So you create a new measure, you decide to create a calculated column. So I said majorly you might want to go with a new measure because it's going to reduce the amount of data that did, and that Power BI is going to load. So instead of adding more data sets to it, but you can also create a calculated column if you want to see your data set physically in the data table. Um, let's see. Victoria is asking, I want to know if there's a possibility of having something similar for Python. And if not, please recommend the best site to learn. Thank you. Okay, Victoria, I'm going to go through. Um, I'm going to let you know the Telegram group is still going to be open. So if there's anything similar coming up, that will be shared there. And if I have a site to recommend to you, I would share that soon as well. I have another question from Emmanuel saying, what if I start my cleaning from Excel? Hope it can work that way too. So you can clean in Excel as well and then export Power BI to provide your analysis. But I think the major aim of this class is to show you what can you do with Power BI. Can you create a data analytics project from start to finish in Power BI? So you might want to challenge yourself. But if you clean in Excel and you load your data in, that's fine as well. But it's basically going to be like, oh, I just cleaned the data in Excel and I exported to Power BI. So you can also do that though. You can do that as well, but it would be nice to also see you like go through a data analytics project from start to finish in Power BI. So let's see. Please, how do we separate each band? How do we separate each band? Okay. For this for your data set, it has already been provided for you. The age band has already been separated in two. So I won't go into that today. It's already been separated. You already have the age band, age group column already separated. You just need to create a chart with it. So I see um, from Michael, does our system date format have effects on our Power BI date? Your system date format? I think it's your Power BI date format that you should be asking, like the date format in your Power BI report from your, what date format is it? There's no date format there. No, no, no. Your date format does not have any effect. It doesn't have any effect on your Power BI date. It doesn't. I think we'll have, what has an effect is your original settings. I see another question here. How do we get the top five and the bottom five? So I'm going to show that quick with me with the, um, so now we have the icons, which I'm supposed to show you. And I'm supposed to show you how to get charts, get other charts apart from the one Power BI provides. So that's two. And then the third one is to show you how to get the top five and bottom five. But the top five and bottom five, I already explained the top five. If you were in the class the day before yesterday, um, Esther, I created a visual of my product. I created a visual of my product. So you should be able to tell that I had kind of like a lot of values there. And I created a top N and I created a top five. So I don't think I'm going to go into this. You should just, you should just go to the previous, previous video and go through it. I think that would help you. Also, um, 
The drop down in my dates does not give me option for quarter and month. The drop down in your date is going to give you the option for quarter and month once you select your date hierarchy. I think I would have to show you that, Michael, but it's going to give you this drop down. Okay, Michael is asking, um, he says he wants to recommend, I want to recommend this course to my colleagues. Can they go through the recordings and homework? Will you be doing any more Power BI classes? How do we follow you? Okay, the Telegram group is still going to be left open for further communications because you're going to work on your case study and I would want you to probably submit that so I can go through them. And from the Telegram group and my Twitter handle, which I shared, I'm going to be updating once I decide to host another class, once I decide to host um, a general class once again. So you can follow me on Twitter and on LinkedIn as well and just keep updated. I think I'm quite active on Twitter, so you can follow my Twitter. So what I'm just going to do is, I'm just going to stop here first and show the how to get the icons, how to get extra chat. So I'm just going to show that and then we're going to come back to the Q&A session if we still have more time. So let me just show that. I'm just going to show that and then we'll come back to the Q&A session. So if you have any questions, just ask it. I'm still going to go through the Q&A again. So I'm heading off to Power BI to show you how you can get icons and um, impute icons in your Power BI report. So first off, you want to get these icons, right? So we're just going to go to Chrome. And this is one of the sites I think you can get icons for free. So flat icons, flat icons, come. So just go to flight icons or come. You can also just Google and Google like icons. Let's say um, Twitter logo, like Twitter logo, Twitter icon. So if that's what you need. So coming up here, this is the interface of flight icons. So I'm just going to come over to let's just come over to icons. So I'm going to select this black and field icons. So let's say I'm doing a Twitter analysis project or a WhatsApp chat analysis or something else. You can select, you can also search. I think it offers you an option to search. So let's say you want to search for an icon, you can search for it here. So I'm just showing you basically how to get one. So I'm going to download this Twitter logo. So download is this not free this was free it's free i think i downloaded earlier today from this site i just use google to download my own icons Also, sometimes sometimes it's difficult to get logos. So that's one of the things that as data analysts, you might spend some time trying to find the right logos so, or icon to use. So you can just browse and search for one that fits in. So I'm just going to select this one here. I was going to use this flat icon, but I've not really used it enough time. So I don't understand 
the, the, the first time I used it, they didn't tell me to pay for it. I usually just Google and I download an icon that works well for me. Let's look at this now. Why is this looking funny? Let's just download this one. Let's come here. Let me get this one. This one has the background. It has the background, you know. I'm not going to download this. I'll just save that like that and just rename it if you want to. So, so now that that's downloaded, I'm not going to move to my Power BI. Come to your insert and you want to insert an image. So I'm going to go to my downloads. So my downloads, the recent download which I just made, I'll open it. This is not it. This is not the recent download. Downloads. So insert get image. This is it. So you see your logo. So what you just do is you just size and fit. So this is how you get it. Just like you're getting an image. You just size and fit based on what you want. So you can reduce it to very small size depending on what you're making. So this is just how you get your logo images that you want to add in your chat. I think this explains that. I hope this was better. So this is just how you get it. Just go to a website, you download what you want, you come to your insert, you insert an image, and you select the image. Now sometimes your image, yeah, yeah, so that's just what you do. So I'm going to be explaining how to um, get, so let me just go to my Power Query Editor that I opened for this. So I'm just going to load it in. Even though this data is not clean, I just want to explain something. So that's why I'm going to just go ahead and just close it, close and apply. But you need to clean your data first before you perform this. So this is just to explain something. So this is why I'm just loading in my data. So um, there's a question of how to get chat. So to get chat, to get other visuals apart from these visuals provided, you would need to sign in first. So even if you come over here to select get more visuals, you'll be asked to sign in. So this is your Microsoft um, address to log in that you're provided with. So this is like your work email that you provided, that you created once you had your Power BI. So you're going to sign into that. You need to be signed in to get visuals. So that's the one thing. The second thing is once you get visuals, let me just go back. So to get more visuals, you come to this three icon here, get more visuals, you select it. You select get more visuals. So it's going to take you to the marketplace. So this is like the Power BI marketplace where you can get visuals, different visuals you want. There was this Instagram chat, a very good Instagram chat I used to see here, but I don't see anymore. I don't know if it's from my end. There was an Instagram chat apart from these two. There was a third Instagram chat that was very good, but I don't see here anymore. 
So you can use this to get a chart. Let's say I want to get what chart do I want to get? What chart? Like you can just scroll down and you can set to any chart you want, basically. But this is how you get. So let me just pick. Let me just pick any one. So you can see some of these charts are the verify tick. So this verify tick is just saying like Microsoft verify day or something like that. Let me just pick one. I'm so indecisive. Like to pick one is just a problem. Let's just pick this box and whisker chart. So once I select it, I'm just going to select add. And then it's going to load and I will just see the visual was successfully imported. So this is it below here. So one thing with adding extra visuals to your report is you're always going to need to add extra visuals on different reports. So this visual is only present in this report. So once you open a new report, you're not going to see it. You, you have to add it in that report again. So the visual is only present for the report you're working with. I don't know if that makes sense. Also, I will just show you a little bit of how you can show. Let me move on to the question um, someone asked, so like top five and bottom five. So I'm just going to show that um, real quick. So let's say I have my product. Let me just create a bar chart. So I have my product, share my product. And then let's say I have my revenue. So as you can see, you're seeing all of the products now here. This is why we have this little um, scrolling, like can scroll down to the very end. So this is large. You don't want to present all of this at once. You just want to show a top five, a top 10 or whatever. So I'm now going to show you how you can show your top five. So what do you want? You want your top five products. By what? Like in what order? In the order of the revenue. So I'm going to come to my filters, product. This is to drop down, select. Filter type from basic routine, you change it to a top N. Top what? Top five. If you use five, you want. By value, by which value? By your revenue. So you just select your revenue, drag and drop it here. And then you're going to have to apply it. So now you just have five products. So if you want to see your bottom five, how do you do that? Let's come over here. So our sort as is. So our revenue is being sorted in what in descending order. What does it mean if our revenue is being sorted in descending order? It means that our first, the highest revenue is coming first. The product with the highest revenue is coming first. Then, it's, then the least, the least revenue. So now I want to get the bottom five. So I'm just going to come to sort ascending. So once I come to sort ascending, it's going to provide me the bottom five. So this is going to be my bottom five revenue by product. Right? Or is it? Oh, hold on a bit. Let's see. So basically, just show your top five products. Let's see. Let me just remove this filter. Just want to remove the filter and go back to the basic future. Basic future matter. Let's go back to our initial sort in the sending order. So let's sort it now. So I'm just going to have this visual now. So this is my bottom five. Mountain 500, black 52, 
something 500 silver 48 i don't think that's clear i don't think you guys can really see can i increase it a little bit let me see if i can increase it better so this is our bar chart so i scroll down to the very end of the product so you can see this is our bottom product that generating the list revenue so the list is mountain 500 black 52 so I'm just going to, I want this to be showing at the top. So I'm going to change my sort as this to ascending order. So now I've changed it now. Now I'm seeing my mountain 500 black 52 here at the top. So this is now showing me my bottom by revenue here at the top. So I can now come here to my products and change my filtering to a top end filtering option. Top five by what? By revenue. And then I apply the filter. I don't know. Wait, it's still not working. Let's see. Hello. Let me see. Let me just move this switching option. I think I'll just do more research on how to get your bottom five because, yeah. So I got a little confused there. So it's just your top and then you see your bottom just here. So I got a little confused. So let's take it again because I think I might have confused you guys as well. So I'm just going to change this back to the sort axis in descending order. So we're going to start over afresh. So this is your this is your bar chart showing you the revenue by product in descending order. So we have the highest revenue on top. So we want to calculate, we want to show the top five products by revenue. So we'll come to our filter pane. We're going to select the filter type to be top N. So we're going to show items, the top items by five. Then we're going to drag our revenue and apply filter. So we get our top five products by revenue. So if we want to change this, we're going to just come over here and change this to the bottom. And I'm going to click on this apply filter again. So you have your top or rather your bottom five products by revenue. So you might want to sort this one now, sort as this, because 52 is your last. You might want to sort this one in, let's say, an ascending order. Or you can sort it in a descending order, depending on what you want. So just sort in a descending order. I think this is better. So 52 is your product with the least revenue. So this is your bottom five. So this is how you do your bottom five products by revenue. I hope I didn't confuse anyone too much. So I think the icon, the icon is here, so you can get your icon and... So the other visual I created, let me just box and whisker chart so the same way you can get your box and whisker and you can use your chart i was going to remove this 
I think I've answered those two questions. Let me go back to some more questions. So I'll start with, let's see. So Shane Solomon is asking, please, about duplicate data, is there not a possibility of a data recurring more than once and yet such data is correct? Like a customer buying same product twice or more. So this is why there is always sometimes a unique ID in every data set. So it's like, sometimes you have your sales ID, which is your unique identification variable. So this sales ID is a unique variable for every sale you make, the customer has a unique, the sale has a unique identifier. So even if a customer comes to buy the same product twice, the sales ID is still going to be, still going to be different. So this is how you can tell this. So in other cases where you don't have this unique identifier. The thing to do is to select your entire data set. And so you're just going to remove duplicates based on the entire row. So you're going to be removing duplicates based on the entire row of data. Based on like a customer cannot have the same, all the same variables, the same name, the same age, the same order, date, and time. And so this is just, this is just like, an assumption or you can put this like a limitation there was no unique identifier so i had to remove duplicates based on the entire column description then i have another question here how do we create relationships so this was what i explained in data modeling so you can you might want to refer back to the data modeling so you have to you only create relationships when you have more than one data tables for this case study you have just one data table so you might want to go over the previous class recordings. So um, Sarah, you said I skipped your question. Can you please um, type it down again in the chat box? Because I don't know. Can you please just type it again so I can go through it? Um, can you arrange some weekly challenge on Power BI? Uh, I'm going to consider that. And I'll let you know in the Telegram group as well. I'll be honest with you, my Twitter name and my LinkedIn is on the Telegram group, but I will share that again this evening. So my Twitter handle and my LinkedIn name, I'm going to just share it again if possible. So I see... Um, My data set has phone number and agent ID. How can one know or see the phone number and other details each agent brings on our dashboard? I don't think your question is quite descriptive, but I'm going to, um, I'm going to just um, explain how I know best, how I understand your question. So probably you want to see some details based on the agent ID. So which agent ID is providing the most I don't know if it's like the most sales or the most profit or whatever. You can, it's just the same thing we have been creating here. Which product is bringing the most revenue? So this is how you can just show your details on a dashboard. You can also be able to show the features like the phone numbers of the agents, okay. So Sarah has says, how do I create a new measure for revenue? So creating a new measure for revenue is what we, did in our last class and which was on day eight so i'm going to explain it but you should 
you should watch that video to better understand. So what is the formula for revenue first? The formula for revenue is your unit price and your quantity. So you just basically have to multiply your unit price by quantity. So you need to write a DAX measure for that. So you can go to the previous Maven Toys data set, which I worked on. You're going to see I calculated a total revenue. So that is, just watch that video and it will be explanatory enough for you to create yours as well. So I see um, a question from Michael saying, my date does not have the date symbol attached to it after clicking on close and apply. But I show the plain box, probably the reason why I don't have options for quarter ETC. What might be the cost? Michael, I don't really understand this question. I, because, let's see. I, I told you to try a date hierarchy on the Telegram group. I don't know if you try that as well. So just let me know if you try that first. Um, should I show? Because if you loaded in your data, probably, I don't know the cost of this. Probably try creating a new, a new Power BI report and importing your data again and performing data cleaning. If the issue still persists, then you can try messaging me. I see another question. Um, in situations where names are mistakenly written like Lagos as Lagos with a number zero, when, I, when we are dealing with large data, how can this be dealt with? So this is where you are the data analyst comes in, your data cleaning skills. So you should try using your drop down buttons to check your field names as well. So using this drop down will show you like, if you have a Lagos, you're going to see the next Lagos close to it that it's showing you a different value so how do you deal with this you're just going to highlight or select the column go to your find and replace and just going to re you're going to replace it with the right values so you're just going to replace that with the right values that's just how you do it so even with large data it's still going to replace it, it just might Maybe take a little while, but not long to replace the values. So I'm going to show, um, let's see if, I don't know if I can show this. Let's just go to Power BI. I I think this is what uh, Michael is saying. His date is not showing this little icon next to it. I just want him to try, uh, Michael, if you can hear me, just try replicating your dashboard again. Try applying data cleaning to it. And if it still happens, just let me know in Telegram group. And we're going to go by it. So once you have this, when I was saying date hierarchy, this is what I meant. Let me just explain it a different thing. So once you bring your date column here, you have this little drop down box where you can see your dates and your date hierarchy. So sometimes you might select dates for you, you will not see your hierarchy. So this is when you come over here and you select the date hierarchy. So I have another question here. Yeah. How can one deal with empty, I think I, you mean missing data and you do not want to remove the old set? Can you leave the empty data set and go ahead? So Paul, this depends on your analysis. So dealing with missing data is something we face as data analysts 
data quality is not always top notch. Data is not always complete. Sometimes you end up dealing with missing values. So what you need to do is, based on your analysis, you need to know what you're going to do with this. For some missing values, your data can come with a description on what to do. You, are, you either fill it with, for numerical values, you can either fill it with, sorry, for categorical values, you can fill it with, let's say, unknown, non, or not given, something like that. You can use that. Now, for your numerical variables now, this is where you actually want to work with, in any project you're working with, you want to work with a data that at least has, has like, how would I put it, at least has some, if you're performing an analysis and it's going to be based off on, your analysis is focused on a particular column of data, you want to, you want to make sure that So let me just go over that again. So if your analysis is based on a particular column of data, you want to make sure that this column of data that is based off on does not have a large amount of, um, of numbers there that is missing values. Let's say you're basing it off on revenue. You don't want to have your revenue column having like 80% of it, 80% of the data missing. You can't perform an analysis based on just that population of data. You want to have at least some data in place. So once you have like, let's say you have like 90% of your data, 90% of your data um, filled up and you have just 10% missing values, you can decide to drop the 10% missing values, like remove rows that is blank. You can decide to drop those values and you would state that as limitations in your analysis. So once you're writing your report or you're giving a detailed um, report on what you performed, you could state clearly that um, a total amount of 10% of the data sets were removed. Um, we're dealing with nodes, so I decided to remove 10% of the data sets. So this is just a limitation to your analysis. Okay, so that question here, yeah. do you by any chance know I got 945 instead of 943 total employees? That should be a case of duplicates. Maybe you didn't remove duplicates in your data set. I think Favor has answered that. So just check if you remove duplicates in your data cleaning. So I have another question, which I'll just answer quick. Please, can we have a note for the dark functions you wrote? So I'm just going to, I think I forgot to send that. So. I'm going to send you the Microsoft, the link to the Microsoft platform so you can see DAX functions and you can be able to read through them and understand what they mean and how to use them. So I'll just send you a link to that. And probably I could also create a note of all the DAX functions I used. So I can send that in the Telegram group as well. So all of this, all, all of this important information I'm going to be sending, I'm going to pin them and I'm going to notify you guys. So that's it, I think. Please, what's the system requirement to run Power BI? You can just go ahead and Google that. I'm not a very, I'm not a very computer person. I don't know much about computers, so I just anything from eight gig would work. So anything from eight gigabyte basically would work for you. So you need something with a large processing speed. So you have the data set, the case study details has been sent to the group chat already. So from there, you can download the data set and you can start working. So I'm going to upload 
I'm going to send a link to a Google Drive where you can upload your dashboards when you're done so I can be able to go through them and offer you like my feedback, my feedback on your dashboard. So that would be Okay, I see um, Esther asking, does our data have subcategory or we have to figure it out ourselves? So your data does have a product subcategory. So I think that's what you're asking. It has a product subcategory. So you... <laughs> so it has a subcategory. So that's the end of today's um, session. And... Thank you for being a part of 10 days of Power BI. I hope you have learned. It. I hope you have something moving on ahead from this. I hope you can at least work and perform basic data cleaning and transformation in Power BI. So thank you for being a part of this process. I would like to see you put your best foot forward and work on the dashboards and send to me, send to the Google Drive link I'm going to share with you and just work on analyzing data. So thank you very much for being a part of 10 Days of Power BI, everybody. So this has been a whole lot of learning in 10 days, I know, and I understand that. So you might need to keep working on this to retain the knowledge. So today's class is just going to end. Also, you can also assess the videos if you want to rewatch, if you want to go over it again. So in case you face any confusions, you can go over the videos as well and be able to like learn more from the videos. So the videos are still going to remain here. And I said I'm going to compile a list of all the resources we use for this program and send it in the group. Telegram group. So Telegram group is where all the information is going to be posted. So just keep checking. The group is still going to be available for any information going further. Thank you very much for being a part of 10 Days of Power BI. And we've come to the end of it. Thank you very much for being a part of this. Good night, everyone. Good night. Have a wonderful week ahead.